Today's episode is sponsored by Leanne Croft. I spent a lot of my childhood wishing that I could be as badass as a certain woman with the last name Croft. Little did I know that she was nowhere near the most impressive lady with that surname. No, Leanne has her beat. There are a lot of reasons why, but one of them is that she went to Patreon and made a pledge, thereby being awesome and also getting access to amazing, hilarious content. Now on to the show. What's up, everybody, and welcome back to All the Things Sort of Truth, the alcohol field chapter by chapter reread with a what? What are we going to do today? Mm, maybe. Earful. An earful? Oh, because of the whisper thing? Yeah. Yeah, the whisper thing. With an earful, even though that sounds weird to say, of craft brew on the side. I'm Nate. And I'm Jade. And today, we are talking about Chapter 11, Stone of Tears. Also, I am happy to say that we are live. So, if you are listening on Spreaker right now, you can hit up the chat and say what's up to us. And until we see you guys talking in there, we're just going to do our thing. I have to start off the night first by apologizing I made a really big mistake. <laughs> <laughs> so throughout this book so far, Jade and I have been telling you guys that we're not super thrilled with the narrator. And I put this guy on blast on the podcast. I said, Jim Dale, you're not good at this. Like, I respect you for pronunciating your words properly way better than I can do. You guys all know it. You listen to me every week. Um but it's just not very good for a story. Like, you take me out of the story by listening to you. And the problem with that statement wasn't my opinion. <laughs> I mean, I like to say that. But <laughs> the problem was Jim Dale did not narrate this book. Yeah, sorry, Jim Dale. No. We looked it up, and Jim Dale is actually the guy who narrates our Harry Potter audible books. And he does a fantastic job. <laughs> like, he's really, really good. <laughs> so when I found out my mistake, I felt awful. Jim Dale, I apologize, dude. <laughs> you are awesome. Keep doing what you're doing. I'm a fan. Whoops, and sorry. <laughs> the man's name... That, that was weird the way I just said that. <laughs> the name of the man that narrates Stone of Tears is Jim Bond, not James Bond. <laughs> He's not that smooth a talker. Um, Jim Bond, and, and all of my previously stated opinions still apply. <laughs> I'm not coming off of that. I just I don't want to be critical of somebody and then find out like I've been – maybe half yelling at the wrong person for a super long time. Um, so, yeah, Jim Dale, awesome. Jim Bond, well, it's a long book. So, you know, maybe maybe he he gets it together at the end. I guess we'll have to see. But, yeah, and I apologize to all of you guys, too, um, because that was wrong information. And, like, sometimes our opinions are wrong, but... <laughs> And it makes us look like a giant asshole. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But we're not trying to do that. So I wanted to make sure that I made it right with everybody and Jim Dale. Still going to say his name in one go because it's hilarious. Um, but, yeah, I feel I feel better now. <laughs> also, I feel like we need to start a campaign. Campaign. Also, I feel like we need to start a campaign to get Sam Tuchibis to read the rest of the fucking books. Yes. That is one thing we did find out last night after we discovered... No. After I discovered our mistake. <laughs> <laughs> My mistake. See, I'm trying to pass the buck, and it's it's not Jade's fault. It's all on me. Um, but we're not the only people with the opinion that we have of Jim Dale. Jim Dale. I did it again. Jim Bond. Um, and people have brought this up. Let's get Sam Chuchivas, who read the first book, to do the rest of them. And I mean, I would sign that. I would sign that. 
He does a weird, like, he does the first one, and then he does the last chunk. Yeah. He, like, he brings it home. Yeah. Which is great, but I don't want to wait that long to hear him again. <laughs> yeah, he would be busy for months if he had to reread all of those books. Like, we, we podcast, like, actively speak into the microphones for a couple hours probably every night that we do these episodes. And then we're editing later, which I'm sure he would have to do, too. And the whole process, we learn, takes a really long time. And... It would be a long time before he got finished. Yeah, they do it so well. They like you never hear them pause ever to like take a drink. It's just a very smooth. Well, I'm sure they like at the end of the chapter, probably. <laughs> yeah, that would make sense. Jujuvis probably is gasping for air at the end of some of his <laughs> passages when he's like getting into it. That's what I said. He's he's not a narrator. He's like an audio actor. Is that a thing? Voice actor? Yeah. No, it's totally a thing. <laughs> Yes, it is. That's what he is. And there's there's a difference. Yeah, Jim Bond, who we, yeah, that's who we're going to yell at now, is not, not. And I don't feel bad saying I don't know how he got paid to do what he did. <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah, somebody must have been like, yeah, that's good. And maybe, well, what I've read about Jim Bond is that he is very reliable and he is interested in the material, so, like, he loves what he does, and so I'll give him those two points. And, yeah, he's very professional. He speaks very, very well. But as far as the 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 dynamic that changes in a book, it, it doesn't in his voice. Yeah. And I, that's my really only criticism. Yeah, I, I feel like he could do, like, uh, an educational book very well. I just don't think he fits this like genre yeah no you need somebody who's who's able to tell a story but that is probably enough <laughs> berating the narrator of, <laughs> of our book um oh yeah it looks like we have some guests aaron duddles is here madison and samantha what's going on you guys thank you for making it here it's for our, our live episode these are our friends <laughs> We do say that there are book friends. There are people. Yeah. <laughs> I enjoy that. <laughs> yeah. Well, I we are all beard up, and now I have bitched out. So <laughs> I say we hit this chapter. All right. So when it starts, <clears throat> sorry about that. When it starts, Richard and Kaylin go to shoot to help with the headaches. And Kaylin knows that Richard may accept the gift but he's not going to wear that collar ever. He's just it's not a conversation that they that they need to have anymore. Right. Let's crawl before we run. <laughs> now she used to shoot so she's going to bring her own bow and <clears throat> and get some shots off herself. Yeah, I thought that was actually kind of funny because they go out into this field and they get set up. Richard you know, he inspects the target, which is a very responsible thing to do. You do that when you go shooting with guns, too. You always look at what you're shooting. <laughs> um, but he's like, nah, the X is too fat. I'm going to make the X way, way smaller. We're going to put it way further away. And he had just asked Kaylin, you shot it before. She's like, yeah. So not expert by any means, not necessarily a beginner, but intermediate. So let's immediately make this target as hard as possible to hit. <laughs> it's kind of like, I mean, maybe maybe a couple warm-up shots, buddy. You know? <laughs> <laughs> well, they do go up further for her to shoot than they do for him. He has to stand, like, super far, far back. And then he doesn't even, like, it doesn't even seem like it's fun at all. I It's, it's ju literally just trying to soothe the headaches because, I don't know, it sounds really boring. Yeah, his purpose is to get rid of the headaches. I would kind of like to see Richard do some trick shooting. Some fancy stuff? Yeah, blindfolded. Do it. I don't know how you could do it safely, but shoot the bow, like, backwards, like, over your shoulder. See if you can <laughs> nail it that way. Or, you know, running. There's obstacles. Can you roll on the ground and do it mid-roll? <laughs> Are some... you like an elf or what? What's going on? <laughs> Real Legolas shit? Yeah. 
I think that would be fucking cool. <laughs> <laughs> so Richard wraps his arm around Kaylin, showing her the best way to, you know, hold the bow. Right. Like like when you're teaching somebody to, like, golf or whatever. <laughs> it's all in the hips. Yeah. Yeah, you don't have to do that from behind. Now, I don't blame him. You know, obviously, it's your girlfriend. Go ahead and snuggle up to her. But it was funny. He's like, no, I got to do this from behind you. No, you don't. <laughs> See, except Richard isn't really, like, interested in, like, ha, ha, ha. Because Kaylin is, like, she's, like, wiggling against him and, like, ooh, look at this. And he's like, hey. He's all business. Focus on the target, lady. <laughs> well, the thing that gets me is that Richard starts to tickle her while she's trying to focus on shooting this bow and arrow. Okay. Dangerous. <laughs> like, he went out to inspect the target, make sure everything's safe, there's no one around. He's being very safe. It's important when you're shooting to be safe. Um, and then he's like, tickle, 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 just before she takes a shot with a bow. Like, what if the bow, or what if the arrow became dislodged from the string and hit the actual, like, bow itself? It can just turn right around and stab. I think. I, Unfortunately, I've watched a video of that going horribly wrong, and a guy gets stabbed in the chest with his own arrow, and it's horrifying. And like, no, you would never do that in a thousand years. Like, tickle, tickle, tickle. I no. feel like you specifically would never do this also to me because I'm clumsy as fuck, and I don't need <laughs> the extra chance that something like that's going to happen because I'm already gonna probably hurt myself that and i hate being tickled so it's like i don't want to do that to her she's yeah. gonna do that back to me <laughs> no thank you richard's point is just that you have to be able to shoot when you're under pressure like no matter what's going on so he starts whispering in her ear telling her like what to do how it's supposed to feel and eventually she can basically call the target she makes it fucking giant in her vision but the only reason she thinks that this is happening is because of, like, Richard's magic. He's whispering in her ear. She gets the, what I imagine to be chills, because I get the chills. And then she shoots the bow, and she sinks the target. Yeah. Um, but she is claiming that that is Richard's magic doing that to her, that she wouldn't be able to do that otherwise. And uh, I think she just probably blocked out the tickling yeah because i mean like i can do that after a little while if you keep poking me eventually i'll just be like ah i'm too hard for that but you won't no <laughs> <laughs> no i never like tickling i hate it it's really the worst thing ever at least when it's done to me <laughs> <laughs> see richard Richard tries to say that this was Kaylin. Kaylin says it's all him. And he's like, no, I was just teaching you. And Aaron just said that a good teacher would probably warn you before you did some shit like that. Because, like, you know, you should to prevent mishaps like you were just talking about. Yeah. <laughs> but, no, Richard is not a very good teacher. No, I mean, it's like, uh, what's what's the figure of speech people use? Baptism by fire. Ah, just like you're going in hope you can swim kid tossing him tossing her tossing her into the deep end yeah <laughs> i was a water baby i don't remember it though not happy about it <laughs> i swear they're like they take a yeah. little little kid and they just like they they don't throw them in the pool but they just kind of let them get the feeling of floating a little bit and yeah. I when I was told about it, it sounded much more dramatic to me, and I thought they had just let somebody toss me in a pool. And I was like, that is bizarre and horrible. I mean, I think they do kind of drop you, like, to a point. <laughs> yeah, well, they probably let your your mouth and your nose go underwater just a little tiny bit to give you that reaction. Like, oh, see how you want to do this? Now do this on purpose, and you can go under longer. Your mom was your mom couldn't swim, so she was like, "Yep, <laughs> yeah. E either they're gonna sink or swim. Let's 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 have them figure this out because I'm not gonna be chasing them into the water." Yeah, we used to.